when did you know? I mean, did you know even when you're pursuing your your PhD that you were that this was the direction that you were going to become an a profession, an academic, or 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 was there at the time? Did you think it was a stepping stone to potentially something else? Or no, I think um, uh, when I started, I was diffident and uncertain. Mm-hmm. But after a year um, of working as a graduate mm-hmm. student, I got enthusiastic and I was convinced that I was going to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And therefore, when I got my PhD, um, I did try to get some postdoctoral position Which and was glad I did. Yeah, we managed to do. Was it any specific thing that turned you on, uh, that turned your, you on and said, this is the right path for me? I don't think so, because it was interesting, because the micro background yes. was discovered and uh, I mean, it was possible to have some new simple ideas which were um, relevant to for these. For some listeners, I guess that there was a sea change, and even it was a little early for me, although, uh, yeah, so uh, in terms of understanding the significance, but but uh, uh, one of your, I guess someone who was potentially a mentor of some sort, Fred Hoyle, mm-hmm. uh, uh, there was a big debate about wh- whether there was a big bang, and and and. I, I mean, while the microwave background was discovered, mm-hmm. which is this, which is the remnant of the Big Bang yes. the, that we now recognize as the remnant of the Big Bang, was it uh, immediately? I mean, in retrospect, we often make it sound like something would immediately change. There was a paradigm shift. Was there a paradigm shift at the time? That was it immediately recognized as unambiguous. Did people change their minds or not? Well, I think in a year or two, the they had to have data at different wavelengths to see if the mm-hmm. spectrum was, yeah. was thermal. But I think. It did convert almost everyone at that time. Um, Fred Hoyle himself was never fully converted. Um, he uh, tried to have elaborate theories, uh, and I would say ended up believing what I call a steady bang, some okay. compromise yeah, model. Yeah, yes. Um, and of course, I, I hugely admired Fred Hoyle, mm-hmm. but I never really worked with him because he started to go off in slightly eccentric directions yes. at the time when I started um, yeah, to be, be in the subject. That, yeah. But he was a really great figure in the subject if you look back at all the things oh, he did. He had an immense impact, yeah. and mm-hmm. I, certainly, well, these things are always. I know, I know your view about awards, and, and I share it in many cases. But he certainly he did work that was, certainly was on par, and many people could say worthy of a Nobel Prize. And, and, oh, of course, well, yeah. he, he he should have got it for his work with with Fowler. But yeah. but more more generally, he was a real uh, polymath and yeah. fo- very inventive and made. Uh, lots of contributions to all branches of astronomy, and, and, and of, of literature. Course, but he also <laughs> enjoyed um, he enjoyed debate. And um, uh, before the micro background was discovered, mm-hmm. there was, as you say, um, the steady state theory was yeah. advocated by him and uh, Bondi and Gold. Yeah. They were three sort of very noisy and articulate people. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they carried much uh, um, resonance outside the UK. Oh, really? Uh, um, uh, certainly not in Russia or not in America either. But in the UK, it was an important debate. And um, uh, the debate involved um, the radio astronomers because mm-hmm. they were the first people who found evidence that the universe couldn't be in a steady state because yeah. they they found that there was m- more evidence that uh, um, radio sources um, uh, were strong mm-hmm. and that radio galaxies existed spewing out radio waves uh-huh. in the past than now, uh-huh. contrary to what you'd expect in a steady state. Yeah. And um, this was a debate where Martin Ryle um, was correct and... Uh, I listened to these debates in the 60s and I felt that Hoyle was perverse not to take them seriously. Uh-huh. But then, then I read more history of the subject. I realised that in the 50s, Ryle had been equally dogmatic when he'd been wrong. Oh, I see. Um, and so I understood that uh, Fred had a reason for being somewhat sceptical, mm-hmm. whereas I came fresh on the scene and Ryle seemed to be talking a great deal of sense. And he, he was at that time, but he, he had been dogmatic and wrong oh, I see. So and were... had earlier standoffs <laughs> with Hoyle and Gold. 